Hello, Dean Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Looks like it's time for another Trump impeachment circus update. I don't think I did one that long ago, but things keep happening and I keep having to do these updates. So I'm going to do one today. But before I get to that, just some other stuff I want to take care of. First of all, I invite, as I have said, people of all political persuasions, wherever you are on the political spectrum, to watch my vlogs and hopefully subscribe to them. I'm open to all points of view. The reason I mention that is because there may be, well, I hope there are liberals watching this vlog. And if there are, I think I better mention because our liberal friends or my liberal friends, they have a tendency sometimes to take things literally. That's why I think I better mention at the outset the vlog I did yesterday. It was a joke. It was supposed to be a joke. OK, so don't get mad. Well, I mean, you might get mad at the joke, but it was a joke. I did not literally mean what I said in that vlog. It should have been obvious. But as I said, with liberals, you never know. I also want to talk briefly about the British election. As I've said in the past, I record these videos a day before I post them, or in the case of a Friday, several days before I post them. So you're seeing this on a Monday. This is last Friday that I'm recording this, and it's the day after the British election. I want to talk about the similarity between liberals in Britain and liberals here. I went on Twitter after it was announced that Boris Johnson and the conservatives, the Tories, had won this tremendous victory. And we're talking an 80 seat, I think it's an 80 seat majority out of a total number of, I think it's 650 members. It was the largest majority since the election of Margaret Thatcher in the 1980s. So I just want to read you just a handful of tweets here that I saw on Twitter shortly after the election results in Britain were announced. So here we go, starting with this one. If the exit poll is even, quote, nearly, unquote, correct, it's time to start considering that the vast majority of people in the UK are just bad people. Today's UK election 2019 result, like the Morrison government, Morrison is Scott Morrison. Scott Morrison is the conservative prime minister of Australia. This is another election that the liberals thought they were going to win and the conservative won instead. So uh, again here, today's UK election 2019 result like the Morrison government and Trump election before it paints a picture of a media misinformation system so well honed and so effective that poor and middle class people continue to vote against their own interest. Rupert, that's Rupert Murdoch obviously, will be very pleased. Every single person who voted Tory, you have blood on your hands. You are complicit in the imminent death of so many vulnerable people. You are responsible. Blank you. You are scum. I have no words other than that I feel physically sick. Anyone who voted conservative should be deeply, deeply ashamed of themselves. How they can sleep at night knowing the damage they've done to this country is truly beyond me. And finally, blood, period, on, period, your, period, hands, period. Every single one of you who voted for those murderers, you are evil. So I just wanted to show everybody that Her Majesty's liberals' heads explode the same as our American liberal heads explode whenever they lose an election. I mean, they got the whole catalog here. People who voted for conservatives are not people who disagree with them. They are bad people. They are evil. We have here a uh, reference to media misinformation. In other words, uh, or a media misinformation system, this one tweeter said, because apparently the media misinformed the people and that caused them to vote incorrectly. Even though the British media, from what I read, especially the BBC, are anti-conservative. They are 
weighted in their coverage, almost as bad as here, maybe as bad as here. Uh, here, of course, we know that the coverage of Donald Trump has been over 90% negative since he became president. The coverage of Boris Johnson in England has been pretty negative. Definitely the coverage of Brexit has been overwhelmingly negative, but here we have the liberals blaming the media, even though any objective observer would have to say that the media has been on the liberal side. The BBC is notoriously liberal and anti-Israel, by the way, um, but that's another vlog. What else have we got here? Well, blank you, the four-letter words. I've never been able to figure that out. I think I mentioned that in an earlier vlog that liberals love using four-letter words. That's their form of argument. They don't make an argument. They just say, blank you. What else have we got here? You have blood on your hands. You, in capital letters, you have blood on your hands. You're uh, complicit in the imminent death of so many vulnerable people. In other words, anyone who voted for a conservative is responsible or will be responsible for the deaths of, I guess, uncounted numbers of Her Majesty's subjects. Let's see, what else have we got here? I have no words other than that I feel physically sick. That's another favorite meme of our liberal friends over here in the USA, that an electoral victory of a conservative makes a liberal physically sick. Voting for a conservative has physical effects on liberals. So the liberals over in England are just as crazy as the liberals over here, or maybe crazy is too cruel. We'll just say unhinged, unhinged, just a, a tendency to overreact to losing an election. Uh, an apparent disbelief that if you lose an election, life still goes on. They should be able to cope, but who knows? And as a consolation to liberals, I see something actually positive here for liberals because just as a shark has to keep moving or it will die, it must always be in motion, a liberal must always be angry. So we've given them something to be angry about. This should hold them until the election of 2020 when Trump is elected again. And then they'll have President Trump to keep them angry for another four years. And then it will be our solemn duty in 2024 to elect another conservative to keep our liberal friends angry for another four years. Because it sounds counterintuitive, but liberals are not happy unless they're angry. They're not happy unless they're unhappy. I know that makes no sense on the face of it, but so much of what our liberal friends believe, to me, makes no sense. And now this brings us to the impeachment update. Sorry if it took a while to get to it. Thanks for bearing with me, but I had to get those other points out there. As you know, the Judiciary Committee voted out two articles of impeachment. As I'm recording this, there has not been the vote on the House floor. We'll have to see what happens. It will be, well, next week from when I'm recording this, it'll be the week that you're watching this, probably Wednesday or Thursday, I think, they're going to hold the vote. Assuming it goes to trial in the Senate, this bit of news is very good, I think. President Trump considering adding controversial lawyer Alan Dershowitz to impeachment legal team. That is great news because, well, first of all, Dershowitz is an excellent lawyer, number one. Number two, he is a prominent, very well respected, well, maybe not by liberals anymore. And in fact, I recall at least two articles or interviews from Alan Dershowitz saying that since he started defending Donald Trump verbally, not in a trial. He no longer gets invited to cocktail parties on Martha's Vineyard. So 
Well, I mean, to me, that's not that great a sacrifice. But I think to him, it's not that great a sacrifice either. That's how you find out who your friends are. If you disagree with him on something and then they disown you, then they weren't really your friends. But I think it's very good having him defend the president because he is a liberal Democrat who defends Donald Trump, number one. Number two, as I just said, he's very prominent and well-respected in legal circles. The mere fact that he is defending Donald Trump, the mere sight of Alan Dershowitz on the floor of the Senate defending Donald Trump will help cement Trump's acquittal just there, but also the argument that he makes I expect to be very strong, and I would indeed suggest to the president, I know you're watching this vlog, so President Trump, I would suggest that you also think about hiring Jonathan Turley. He was the one of the four scholars testifying before the House Judiciary Committee who, like Dershowitz, is a liberal Democrat, who, like Dershowitz, did not vote for you, who, like Dershowitz, defended you. That, to me, would be a real dream team, or I guess you would have to say a dream pair, since there's only two of them, right? And this brings us to the very last item, but I save the best for last. You know how it is that people, when they're speaking in public, they are sometimes, especially a politician, careful about what they say. But when they are in a private or what they consider a private setting or a setting where they forget that they're being recorded and they're in front of a friendly audience, they will sometimes say things that reveal their true feelings. They'll say one thing to the public and then the mask comes down and they say what they really believe. That's what recently happened with Nancy Pelosi. So I'm going to put up the headline here. Pelosi admits Dems have been trying to impeach Trump for the last, quote, two and a half years, unquote. I'm not going to quote an article. I'll give you an actual tape. Watch the tape, and I'll come back with my final comments. One of the biggest criticisms of the process has been the speed at which the House Democrats speed? are moving. If this is, but seriously though, seriously. It's been going on for 22 months, okay? <laughs> no, two and a half years. And there you have it, on tape, Nancy Pelosi, Democrat, Speaker of the House, admitting that the Democrats have been trying to impeach Donald Trump to remove him from office for two and a half years years. Remember now that that phone conversation, the conversation between Trump and President Zelensky of Ukraine on which they are trying to impeach Trump and remove him from office, that occurred only this last July, July 25th. Trump released the actual memo of the phone call just a month later, sometime in August, as I recall. But we have this admission from Nancy Pelosi that they have been trying to impeach him since the day he took office, before the Democrats even took control of the House or won control of the House. That has been their project from day one. They were just looking for a pretext on which to impeach and remove him. I would only add that it is incumbent on us and any, just as happened in England, any liberals who have integrity to support Trump, not to let the Democrats get away with this. I'm not going to hold my breath, but that's what they should do. And that's the vlog for today. Thanks for stopping by, as usual. Thumbs up if you like this video. Share it with anybody you think would also like the video. Got any comments? You can put them in the comments section below the video. You can also suggest topics, questions you'd like me to answer in that same comment section. I would love to have more subscribers, so subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And finally, come back and see me again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.